again. Fourth time in a row. I wonder if he could get me off if I shot my city editor. That's a tough one to lose, John. All right, you were. Hey, Phil. Yeah? Give me a shot of the Elliott kid and his uncle. They're coming out now. Okay. No pictures, please. What's this? A theatrical producer turning down publicity? This sort of publicity, yes. Any objections? Not at all, my friend. Thanks, Mr. Fenton. Oh, wait a minute. Now that we've convinced everyone of Don's innocence, I should think you'd be very proud to advertise the fact. Just heard the news. A brilliant job, Mark. Congratulations. Thanks, Sam. Congratulations. Congratulations for what? For helping set a murderer free? Please, mother. He's a murderer. He killed Aunt Evelyn, didn't he? You lied in there. You know you lied. Evelyn didn't run in front of your car. You were too drunk to see, so you killed her. You killed her. You killed her. You killed her. Mother, please. You killed her. Come on, Don. The winner always has to face a scene like that. Don't let it get you down, kid. But I did tell the truth. Didn't I, Mark? Why, certainly you did. I try to remember everything that happened that night. Somehow I never felt quite sure. It's only natural in your condition. Look, Don, there's nothing wrong with your memory. Wasn't that proven by those two witnesses? Yes, but... They verified your testimony, every word of it. Now, forget it. Okay, Mark. Thanks a lot. I'll say goodbye here. I'd like to talk to your uncle alone for a moment, if you'll excuse us. Sure. Do you want me to wait for you? Please, but not in the nearest bar. That wasn't very diplomatic, Steve, after what he's been through. What Don's been through hasn't touched him. In fact, it's been quite an ordeal bringing your client into court every morning. Sober. Hello, Mr. Fenton. Hello. Well, what have we to discuss that's so private? Thanks. Your new production? Miracle at Midnight? Yes, and Paula Marlowe. Oh, yes. I dropped into the Courtney Theater the other evening to watch Miss Marlowe and that thing she's doing with Fitzgerald. Well? She's a very competent actress. She's not right for my play. Well, I want Paula to have that part. I don't. Well, perhaps we're being too polite about all this. When I agreed to take Don's case and guarantee his acquittal, you promised to start falling in Miracle at Midnight. Oh, no. I merely promised to consider Miss Marlowe as a possibility. Well, I have considered her, and she is not a possibility. Oh, by the way, the very substantial check I gave you has been returned by my bank with your endorsement. I believe that's the only receipt I'll need to prove that I've paid in full for your excellent services. Goodbye, Mr. Fenton. You heard the news yet? She sure has. I got her the papers. <laughs> I never saw Miss Marlowe so interested in one of your cases. <laughs> it was a very <laughs> exceptional case. Mark? Yeah. May I come in? Sorry, darling, you'll have to wait. Oh, Mark, I've been reading all about your wonderful trial, and I'm so happy and thrilled, and so proud of you, of course. Now run along and talk to Pop or someone. I'll be ready in a minute. Louise, this is the most exciting day of my life. Mine too, Miss Paula. And I'm not a lady with many dull moments. Hmm. Stephen Elliott presents Paula Marlowe in Miracle at Midnight. Mm. Won't that be something? Hmm. Oh, Susan, dear, forgive me. I forgot all about you. You look so negative in that dress, sweet. Well, if you're having dinner with Mr. Fenton, I'd better run along. You most certainly will not. You're coming with us. No, I... Louise, find something in mind for her to wear. Yes, Miss Paul. No, really, I brought plenty of clothes. Oh, I don't doubt that, but let's not unpack them just yet. Hmm? I've tried so hard to forget the things they sell at the Emporium back in Great Falls. How about this for Miss Susan? No. No, I'll wear that. Find her something a little more sophisticated. Oh. Everyone will know she's my younger sister. We needn't make an issue of it. Well, hurry and change, darling. Mark's waiting. Polly, you're sure he won't mind? Baby, he'll adore having you. But please, please remember not to call me Polly. And you, my little cherub, are no longer Susan Martz. From now on, you're Susan Marlowe, just two years younger than Sister Paula. On oh, another thing. Don't ever mention Great Falls, Idaho. 
Not even in your sleep. Well, I'll have to mention it when I apply for a job. What job? Well, I told you I graduated from business college. You just don't listen. That's why I came to New York, to be a secretary. A secretary? I can type 60 words a minute. Is that good? Well, naturally, I want to do better. You will, my pet. I'll see to that. Stephen Elliott presents Paula Marlowe. And crepe Suzette's for three, please. Thank you, sir. Paula, you never told me you had a sister. Oh, yes, I have. Hundreds of times. Funny, I don't remember. Where's she been hiding you? Well, I've been in school, finishing school. She must have finished rather unexpectedly. Yes, she did. She wanted to surprise me. Think you're going to like it here? Oh, oh I... Mark, let's stop this small talk and get down to big talk. What about Stephen Elliott? When do I see him? When do I get a script? And when do rehearsals start? Well, when? Paula, Stephen Elliott's changed his mind. What? Uh, just what do you mean, Mark? He changed his mind. Well, he's decided to use another actress. Why, he can't do such a thing. Not after what you've done for that no-good nephew of his. I'm afraid he can, Paula. Oh, this is ducky. Just ducky. But Polly, uh, Paula, you still have this show. Oh, have I? It so happens that I just gave Fitzgerald my two weeks' notice. Oh, well, enough about poor little Paula's troubles. We don't want to spoil Susan's first evening in town. Uh, of course we don't. Paula, I know you're used to getting what you want, and so am I. Neither of us likes to accept defeat. You've never had to accept it? No, I guess I haven't. Neither will you. I'll buy you a play, any play you want. The play I want isn't for sale. Well, then, all I can do is hope that this will take the edge off your disappointment a little bit anyway. Oh. Oh, Mark, how lovely. Lovely? Oh, that's the most beautiful bracelet I've ever seen. Oh, Paula, how can you even think about old plays when you have someone like Mark? Susan, you're wonderful. Do me a favor and tell that to Paula at least 20 times a day. Why? because I honestly don't want to buy her a play. I want to buy her a wedding ring. But, but darling, you can. Paula. If I don't continue my career as a star in Mr. Elliott's production. Oh, but that's all over. I mean, well, isn't it? Not quite. Oh, Mark, it's really lovely. Oh, Paula, let me see it. I told you we'd run into Mark here, Fletch. Come on, let's say hello to him. No, John, I'd rather not. Well, that's why I brought you here. Uh, he's busy. Well, you do as you like, but I won't miss an opportunity like this. What opportunity? Maybe you didn't see that boy at the bar when we came in. Which one? Right over there on the end. Don Elliott. Yes. Poor boy. So falsely accused of manslaughter. It's pathetic. He's suddenly taken to drink. <laughs> Excuse me, Fletch. The fabulous Mr. Fenton, I believe. Well, if it isn't Mr. District Attorney. Does this mean that I'm forgiven for saving another client from your clutches? Congratulations, Mark. You were brilliant. Uh, thank you. I believe you know Miss Marlowe. Yes, how do you do? Good evening. And another Miss Marlowe, Susan, Paula's sister. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, please sit down, Mr. Kimball. Well, thank you. Now we'll never get rid of him. Mark. Oh, don't mind their insults, darling. They're really very good friends. Yes, we are. Especially when Mark's entertaining someone who's young and pretty. That's a fetching little trinket you have there. Oh, it's Paula's. A present from Mark. Just a little memento of my latest acquittal. The Elliott case, you know. Oh, yeah. It even has their names engraved on the back and the date. Date? To celebrate his winning the case, Mr. Kimball. It's dated today. Where do you have engraving done on such short notice? Short notice? I ordered it a week before the trial began. He always does. You mean every time he wins a case, you get a bracelet? Mm-hmm. Isn't he sweet? What do you give away when you win, Mr. Kimball? Well, that's quite a coincidence, Miss Marlowe. I, too, celebrate with bracelets. Oh, really? Yes, only mine are not as popular in design as yours. They're made of steel, and they come in pairs, and locked together very tightly. And, of course, you had a pair ready for the kid this afternoon. Yes, I did. Only he wasn't guilty. According to those unimpeachable witnesses, the same ones who testified that Don Elliott never takes more than an occasional cocktail. For example, have a look. Well, why shouldn't he celebrate? Why, indeed. Only his method contradicts the testimony of your witnesses, Mark. 
By the way that kid drinks, he'll never reach 30, and that'll be most unfortunate for Uncle Stephen. What do you mean? He inherits three millions when he's 30, and as trustee, Uncle Stephen gets plenty of it. I'll bet he'd give a lot to get that boy cured of drinking. Well, I should run along. Oh, Mark, I have Fletcher Halliday with me. Really? Yes, he's been having a pretty rough time of it lately. Oh, I told Fletch if ever he needs anything to... Excuse me. Surely. Certainly. Oh, uh, who is Mr. Halliday? He started Mark and me in his law office, and there isn't a keener man in the business, and he's as honest as the day is long, but, well, he trusted the wrong people, and it's just one of those things. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I hope I see you again very soon, both of you. Oh, Mr. Kimball, uh, Susan is staying with me. Mark knows the number. I'm afraid she'll be pretty lonesome with me so busy. Oh, well, in that case, Susan, maybe you'd like to have lunch with me here tomorrow, say, at 1 o'clock. Oh, well, I... Oh, perfect. I'll drop her here on my way to the hairdresser. Oh, well, that's fine. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Paulie, you almost forced him into asking me. Darling, one doesn't force John Kimball into anything. You said you wanted to do better than 60 words a minute. Well, here's your chance. Oh, Paula. Oh, uh, Susan, dear, would you excuse me for a moment? I'll be right back. Congratulations. Were you speaking to me, I hope? Yes, don't you remember me? I'm Paula Marlowe. We met at Maurice Fitzgerald's opening night party. Paula Marlowe. Oh, yes, of course. How are you? Fine, thank you. I, uh, I just wanted to say how very happy I am that you won the verdict you deserve. Well, thank you. Won't you join me? Oh, I'd love to, but I have to be at the theater in a little while. I, I never drink before a performance. How long does the performance last? Oh, I'm, I'm always home by 11.20. I'm at the Wakefield. Love to have you drop by if you're in the neighborhood. Wakefield. Well, thank you. I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, where's Miss Susan? She probably went to bed hours ago. And that's just what I'd like to do, if you don't mind, Miss Paula. I've been sunk ever since I heard we weren't going to star on Miss Elliot's show. All right, Louise, trot along to bed. Thank you, Miss Paula. Good night. I'll put these in my icebox. box. Good night. Oh, I hope you don't mind, Paula. I knew you wouldn't let me wear the formal I bought at the Emporium. Of course I don't mind, dear. But wouldn't pajamas be more appropriate? It's time you were in bed. Oh, no. Mark wants to take us to a nightclub. Tonight? Yes. He doesn't want you to sit at home and brood about the Elliot play. Why must Mark make these sudden plans without consulting me? Oh, you can't disappoint him. He's picking us up at 11.20. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint him. I simply can't go out tonight. Not with this beastly headache. Paula, you have been worrying yourself about that play. Yes, uh, I suppose I have. I'd rather stay home tonight and rest. Darling child, you'll need a wrap. I won't go without you. Oh, now, don't be silly. Here, wrap yourself up in this and have a wonderful time. No, Paula. Oh, Paula. Come on, dear. You can meet Mark in the lobby and hurry. He hates to be kept waiting. But what'll I tell him? Well, uh, tell him I said to show you the town and, and stay out as late as you like. I trust you both implicitly. Is Miss Paula Marlowe in? Why, I, I... I don't think she is. She's expecting me. We're going out. Oh? Well, please sit down. Thank you. Paula, darling, your headache is here. Thank you, Walker. Oh, uh, Walcott. Yes, sir. You predicted every success I've had in the theater. Your judgment uh, of a script is almost uncanny. Why, Mr. Elliot, thank you, sir. I've been reading the shooting scene from Miracle at Midnight. What was your reaction to that? Well, if you don't mind my saying so, sir, I was... Well, my sense of delicacy was somewhat offended by the dripping of the red ink from the closet. I did think the murder could have been a bit more tidy, sir. Tidy murders are seldom good box office, but I'll give it some thought. 
Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, oh, Walcott. Yes, sir. These weird powers of yours, uh, would they work, well, say, where my nephew is concerned? You mean the reason for Mr. Don's prolonged state of sobriety, sir? Precisely. Well, if you don't mind my saying so, Mr. Elliott, I, I think there's a female involved. Yes? Oh, yes. He has that, uh, that look, if you know what I mean. I think I do. Donnie, thanks so much for the beautiful roses. Oh, that's all right. Just throw your stuff anywhere. It's getting a little chilly out. Louise got any coffee back there? Louise has gone shopping. Wouldn't you rather have a drink? Uh-uh. Are you sure? Just a teeny one? You don't have to test me anymore, Paula. I'm going to keep right on testing and tempting you until I'm sure you're on the wagon for good. I've been on it for two weeks now, haven't I? Two weeks? Well, what about two months from now or, or two years? That all depends upon you. No, darling. That depends upon you. You didn't understand what I meant. Don, has your family noticed any change in you? Oh, I don't have much of a family. Only Uncle Stephen. Well, what about him? Surely he's aware of the fact that you've stopped drinking. Uncle Stephen has been very busy with a new play. Oh, yes. I've been reading about that. When does it open? He hasn't even gone into rehearsal yet. Can't find a leading lady. Well, I'm leaving Escape. Maybe I should apply for the job. I thought about suggesting you. Then I read the script. Why did you change your mind? Well, the girl in the show is a selfish mercenary character. She does nothing but lie and cheat throughout the entire three acts. Paula, you could never play that type of part. Darling, I'm an actress. Yes, you're an actress. But above all, you're a person. A sweet and lovely person who can never be convincing in a part like that. Do you really mean that, Don? Hi, Susan. Hello. Paula, I'm going out to keep that appointment. Darling, I do wish you'd stop looking for those gruesome jobs. Why doesn't she like me? It's perfectly plain. Susan's had her eye on you. Why, she's done nothing but glare at me ever since we first met. Uh, defense mechanism, darling. I honestly think you're wrong, Paula. Oh, I don't say that she's in love with you, but... Well, just don't pay so much attention to me when she's around. She's not around now. Hello? Paula, how about dinner tonight? Why, why, yes, whenever you say. It's my hairdresser. I'll pick you up at the usual time. You sure you feel all right, honey? You know, I'm worried about those headaches you've been having lately. Oh, well, I've been a little worried myself, but, but just now I feel wonderful. Bye. <laughs> Dear old Henry, always worrying about my silly headaches. Thanks, Walker. Yes, sir. Oh, Don. Yes. I'm dining home this evening. What about it? Well, I thought it'd be nice if you'd be here, too. We haven't had a chance for talk for quite some time. It's just as well, isn't it? Money's a dull topic, and that's the only thing we have in common, my money. Well, since my company is so boring, perhaps there's someone you'd like to have join us. Who, for instance? Some young lady, perhaps. How did you know? I didn't. It wasn't merely a guess. It was a very good guess. You really want to meet her, huh? As your trustee, I think I should. All right. But don't try to break it up. It won't do any good. Why should I? Why, didn't you know? If I marry before 30, all father's nice money goes to charity. And that will leave Uncle Stephen slightly less than nothing. See you at dinner, old top. Shall we say 8.15? As you wish. Hold the wire, please. I'll see if Miss Marlowe's at home. Here's your ancients, Mr. Don. Already? He just left here half an hour ago. Yes, ma'am. He sure is monotonous. 
Hello, Don. Dinner with your uncle? Tonight? Well, yes, I, I'd love to meet your uncle, dear. But this is such short notice. Some other time. Well, all right, I'll, I'll come if you insist. And I'm sure you won't mind if I bring Susan. I just couldn't leave her here all alone. Bye. Louise. Yes, sir. Get on that telephone and call Francine. Tell her to keep the shop open until I get there. Tell her I want the most exciting, glamorous gown she has. This is my last chance and I'm not going to miss. Yes, Miss Paul. Honestly, Paula, I still don't know why you're dragging me along. Darling, Don insisted that you come. You know, Susan, I think he sort of goes for you. Yes, I could tell that by the way he kissed you this afternoon. Oh, that kiss didn't mean a thing. Come on, baby. What does mean something around here then, Paula? Where will it all end? All what? You and Don and now his uncle. <laughs> I hope. Well, there won't be anything to laugh at if Mark Fenton finds out. That's my little problem, darling. Maybe not so little. You know, there's something about Mark that frightens me sometimes. John told me I that... know how to handle Mark. Why, Mark? Hi, beautiful ladies. Why the glamour get-up? Oh, Mark, darling, how can I ever thank you? What have I done now? Oh, honey, don't tease me. I know you're the one who arranged my dinner engagement with Mr. Elliot. Stephen Elliot? Why, yes. He called and wanted to see me tonight. About the play? Oh, what other reason could he have? Naturally, I thought you fixed it. Oh, darling, didn't you really? No, it must have been his own idea. Oh. Oh, well, then my date with you... Oh, you'll go see Elliot, of course. Oh, Mark, you're precious. Remember one thing. No matter what happens, no matter how big a success you are in the play, you'll remember who you belong to, won't you? Why, of course, darling, of course. Come on, Paula. Let's go to the den and dance. Oh, oh, why don't you ask Susan down? She'd love to. Oh, Susan, dear, Don would like to dance with you, but he's afraid you'll turn him down. Would you care to dance, Susan? Love to. Uh-uh. Only three drinks, Mr. Elliot. Don isn't drinking anymore, remember? Not even a brandy? Not even a brandy. Miss Paula, you make a practice of regenerating lost souls. <laughs> oh, hardly. I found it pretty dull work. <laughs> But you see, when Don began calling on Susan, I... Susan? Why, yes. Oh, surely you don't think he's interested in me. Well, it seemed pretty obvious at dinner. Oh, well, he's just made a point of being nice to me ever since I, I made such a fuss about his drinking. You see, I told him if he didn't stop, he couldn't call on Susan anymore. You know, it's refreshing to find a girl like you, one so concerned about her sister's welfare. Frankly, I, uh, I'd suspected quite a different motive. A role in one of my productions, perhaps. You're right, Mr. Elliot. That's just why I'm here. But the part I want isn't in one of your productions. It's the starring role in Miracle at Midnight. Oh, Wolcott. Yes, sir. Could you visualize Miss Marlowe as Maxine? I've been visualizing nothing else all evening, sir. Mm -hmm. I'll get a copy of the script. That is, if you'd care to read a few lines. Oh, why not? Yes, miss? Wolcott, if I'd only known you were casting the play, things would have been so simple. Yes, miss. I can't possibly meet you for cocktails. No, dear, I won't be finished with this fitting for another hour. And I have an appointment with the photographer, then there's a press interview, and after that, there's a rehearsal. Yes, dear, there's a rehearsal every night. Bye. Paula. Oh, Don, darling, I can't stop now. I'm late for rehearsal. Call me. I've been calling you for days, but you're never home. But I told you I practically live at the theater. Don't worry, dear. Things will be different after the opening. That's it. Play it just that way. Okay, Larry, let him go. All right, 
people one hour for lunch. We'll do the second act as soon as you get back. All of them. I have to go over some sketches. I'll meet you at the band box. I thought you had another luncheon engagement for today. I canceled it. Oh, Stephen, uh, let's make it that quiet little spot on 50th Street. I'm not up to the band box just now. Anything you wish, my dear. Joe. Yes, Miss Marlowe. Will you deliver a note for me? Sure, where to? The band box. Oh, Miss Paula, honey, that's the best first act we ever had. Too bad you're having a pull with the critics, Louise. Well, haven't I been cultivating that man from the Harlem Chronicle? That's one good notice we're sure of. What an audience. Oh, they were good to you, Miss Paula. Are you decent? Come in. Paula. Oh, Stephen, was I all right? Oh, magnificent. Sure to be a hit. Biggest hit I ever had. Thanks to you. Oh, oh, Stephen, Louise. Oh, it's time she found out we were going to be married. Be right with you. Excuse me. See you after the next act. All right, dear. Mm, Miss Paula, he sure will make you a wonderful husband. He's got that sweet aroma of folding money about it. Yes, he's really a dear. But what about Mr. Fenton? You let me worry about Mr. Fenton. Oh, I wasn't worrying about him. I'm worrying about you when he finds out. Well, you did it again, Stephen. We did it, Larry. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Oh, Stephen, let me be the last to congratulate you. Thank you, John. How are you, Susan? Fine, thank you. Wasn't it wonderful? I'm glad you liked it. Pardon me, Shirley. Oh, Stephen, I want you to talk to some people. Will you? Paula, let's hurry up and get out of here. But, oh, darling, we can't leave now. Why not? Well, it would be so rude, dear. After all, Stephen's giving this party for me. Ah, they'll never miss us. Let's go. Paula! Paula, my sweet, you are marvelous tonight. Oh, thank you, Gwen. Of course, it's a divine party. Couldn't miss. But do you know, Paula, you look exactly like your own daughter? I don't know how you do it going on and on, year after year. I should think the strain of the theater would get you down. Thank you. But you look so wonderful. You look so young. You're a perennial, aren't you? Knew. Party boring you, Fenton? Decidedly. Well, why don't you leave? I'm waiting for Paula. You're leaving without her. And after tonight, don't try and see her again. What kind of a contract do you think you have with Paula? This has nothing to do with contracts. I advise you to keep away from her. Sorry, my friend, but I intend to marry her. You're the one who's going to stop seeing her. We'll see about that. Oh, Stephen, darling, it's such a beautiful party. Yes, dear. It's getting better all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? There are two happy reasons for this party tonight. One of them, as you already know, is the play. The other, I'm very proud to announce that Miss Paula Marlowe has promised to marry me. Oh, congratulations. Goodbye. Paula, I'm sorry for what happened. Oh, I don't care about that. I've had men fight over me before, and I love it. Grand publicity for the show. But Paula, you can't turn a thing like this into publicity. Oh, can't I? It's as easy as turning you out of my life, which I'm doing right now, in case you don't understand. You can run along now, Mark. I shan't need you anymore. You're wrong, Paula. You will need me again. You'll need me very much. Joe? Yeah. Well, boss, 
here's the dope. Even last night, she didn't leave Elliot's house till 3 a.m. He put her in her car and kissed her bye-bye, but good. And after the show, she's going to his house again. Now, here's what I got planned. Joe, I won't need any more reports on Miss Marlowe and Elliot. Yeah, I've been reading about it in the papers. That Elliot's a rat. Anything else, boss? No, I'll call you. Joe. Yeah. Is Miss Marlowe driving home with Elliot tonight? Nope. Says she can't get there till after midnight. And for him to go home and wait for her. Anything else? No. Susan, mind if I come in and wait for Paula? Why, no. Is she expecting you? No. Well, uh, she isn't coming right home from the theater. Oh. Well, just tell her I stopped her to apologize for what I did last night. You don't need to apologize to anyone, Mark. Least of all, my sister. Oh, thanks, Susan. I'm not looking for sympathy. But I could use a drink. Well, help yourself. Thanks. I've learned a lot of things around here, but bartending isn't one of them. Care for one? No, thanks. I wonder if you'd mind getting me some ice. Not at all. Anything else? I have everything I need. To your sister. Yes, sir. Will you light the fire, please? Thank you, sir. Hmm, what are we here? Expecting our fiance? If you're referring to Paula? Yes. She's coming over to discuss some changes in the script. Oh, you don't have to explain. And take off that worried look. I'm not going to stay. Just came down for a little nightcap. doesn't like swing, Unc. She's very partial to Latin music. Rumbas, tangos, this sort of thing. Anything else you'd like to know, just ask me. I know the lady's preferences and practically everything. I'm beginning to get fed up with your remarks about Paula. So what are you going to do about it? <laughs> You'll wish you never did that. That's all, Walker. I let Miss Marlowe in myself. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night.
Efendim. Sıra. Sıra. Well, you... You are determined to get Paula back, aren't you? No. I don't want the present Paula back. But there'll be a new Paula after I've killed you. So you think you're shooting me will... change her? No. But her shooting you would. Oh, she'd be acquitted all right by any male jury. But it would mess up her pretty career. And I imagine domestic security might be very welcome to an actress nobody will hire. But, my dear fellow, if you're going to shoot me, how does Paula get in on the job? That's my problem. Which, by the way, I think I've solved rather neatly. Oh, look here, Finn. This kind of a joke is in very poor taste. Murder always is. Put that away. If you're so set on Paula, you don't have to kill me to get her. After all, I'm afraid life is sweeter to me than any woman. Would you agree to replace her in your show? Why not? Never see her again? Yes. If that's the way it's got to be. But first, I want to show you something. I think this may interest you. Oh, no, you don't. Stephen. together and make some sense. But he's dead, I tell you. How long have you been here? I just came. They won't think I did it, will they? Oh, Mark, you've got to help me. Look, darling, I came here tonight to tell Stephen I, I couldn't bury him. Mark, I want you. What are you doing here? I came here to kill him. Oh, Mark. If the police find me here... They won't. You're going home and leave everything to me. Well, what'll I tell them when... I'll they... take care of everything. Remember, you didn't come here tonight. Don't talk to anyone, not even your sister. Oh, darling, how can I ever thank you? You better get going.
This is Mark Fenton. I want to talk to John Kimball. Well, wake him. And tell him to come to the Elliott home immediately. I've just killed Stephen Elliott. So you came here to apologize to Elliot. Before you had a chance, he pulled a gun on you. And you beat him to it. You don't expect me to believe that, do you? If you don't like my confession, why don't you write one yourself? Is that all you've got to say? That's all. My little nephew's been wanting a new bedtime story, and I certainly hope I can remember this one. Mr. Kimball. Get a load of this. Lipstick, huh? And this. Where'd you find it? On the floor near the desk. And didn't Fenton say Elliot was alone? Everything Mark Fenton has said is part of a very pat and well-rehearsed story, and I'm beginning to understand why. Although I can't understand why he wants to protect her after the runaround she gave him. Did you ever hear of something called love, boss? Hello, Don. I'm sorry to have to question you at a time like this. It's all right. What do you want? I suppose Wilkett has told you your uncle's been shot. Shot? <laughs> it's too good for him. I'm afraid Mr. Don will not be very helpful tonight, sir. Yes, I'm afraid of the same thing. Take him back. Yes, sir. Wilkett? Yes, sir. What time was Miss Marlowe here this evening? I told you Miss Marlowe wasn't here. I'm asking Wilkett. Uh, Mr. Elliott dismissed me before Miss Marlowe arrived. Then she did arrive. Why do you insist upon dragging her into this? I told you I shot Elliot in self-defense. Yes, I remember. But there are one or two other things that... Wilkett we'll telephone Miss Marlowe to come here at once. Yes, sir. And then allow me to send for my attorney. <laughs> Why, it's perfectly horrible. I just can't believe it. Mark, you couldn't have done such a thing. Paula, I had to. <laughs> Susan, I'd like to ask you some questions. Why should you question my sister? Very well, Miss Marlowe. We'll start with you. What time did you leave here tonight? Leave here? Why well, I wasn't here tonight, Mr. Kimball. I did have an appointment with Stephen, but I canceled it and went for a drive by myself. It always relaxes me. Susan, what time did your sister come home tonight? She doesn't know. She was asleep. Yes, I was asleep when Paula came in. I went to bed right after Mark left. Mark Fenton called at your apartment tonight? At about 11.30, I think it was. I went to apologize to Paula. Seems to me that you were in a very apologetic mood tonight, Mark. Mr. Halliday is here. Oh, bring him in. Do you mind if I see him alone, John? No, go ahead. Miss Marlowe, what time did you arrive home tonight? I don't remember, but I'm sure my garage attendant could tell you. Thank you. Now, when you went for this drive, you tell me exactly where you went. Why, of course. So there you have it, Fletch. What do you think? Well, I don't know, Mark. To be very frank, your case is weak. Why? I did a fool thing and I came to apologize, that's all. But with a gun in your pocket. I always carry a gun. Mark, I honestly think you'd do well to get some other lawyer. Now look, Fletch, I sent for you because you're a good lawyer and a square shooter. I know you can get me out of this mess. Perhaps. But only in my own way, Mark. Of course. Suppose I have to involve somebody else. You're handling the case. Here's your retainer. 10,000? Oh, no, Mark. I believe that's your fee as a retainer. That used to be my fee as a Still retainer. Still would be if you hadn't been so conscientious. Now that's over, Mark. You know, I may be unable to earn this. Uh, you'll get me off. Because you're a boy who thinks of everything. We better get in there. Hello, Fletch. Hello, Tom. It's good to see you. Just like old times. Fletch, this is Miss Marlowe and her sister, Mr. Halliday, my attorney. How do you do? How do you, how do, you do? Susan, I don't think we'll be needing you. Wouldn't you like to rest for a while? Well, I'd like to stay here with Paula, if you don't mind, John. I'd rather you didn't. Well, I really don't see any sensible reason in my staying either, Mr. Kimball. I've told you all I know. Wilkett? Yes, sir. Will you take Miss Susan someplace where she can rest, please? Yes, sir. Come with me, miss. Sit down, Fletch. Mark? I'd like to go over this thing once more, if you think you can remember your lines. I'm letter perfect, Mr. D.A. All right, we'll start right from your entrance here tonight. I think you said you came through the terrace door. Yes. And you told me you came to apologize to Elliot. Now, that was my reason. 
All right, if your intentions were so friendly, why didn't you come to the front door? Well, to be perfectly frank, I was afraid I wouldn't be admitted. All right, so you came through the terrace door, then what? Well, when I entered, Elliot was sitting at his desk. Naturally, he was a little startled to see me come in that way. I immediately said I'd come to apologize for striking him the night before. That was very noble of you, Mark, especially since he'd stolen your girl. But go on, what did he say? Nothing. He just got to his feet and stood there glaring at me. I went over and put out my hand in a gesture of friendship. He called me a pretty ugly name. And then he went on to accuse me of encouraging Paula to lead him on so she could start his show. Why did he say that? I'll never know. Before I could answer, he said, Fenton, I'm going to kill you. Then I saw his hand slowly opening the top drawer of his desk. I went for my gun, of course. Just as he raised his eye, I shot at his hand. You shot at his hand, and the bullet entered just above his left eye. I always thought you were a crack shot, Mark. Well, I am ordinarily, but uh, you see, this thing happened in a split second, please remember. Go on with your story. Well, when I saw that Elliot was dead, I went to the phone and, and called you. I believe you told me Miss Marlowe wasn't with you when all this happened. Of course she wasn't. Elliot and I were here alone. And Miss Marlowe also denies being here, right? That's right. I have just one more question to ask. Miss Marlowe, do you recognize this? Why, yes, that's mine. When did you last see it? Well, I don't remember. Sometimes I wear all my bracelets and sometimes I don't. This bracelet was found under the desk in the den tonight. But it couldn't be. You probably lost it here last night at the party. Oh, yes, of course. That must have been it. What about this? Did you lose this, too? As you can see, it's well decorated with lipstick, and it was found on an ashtray in the den. John, do you think Miss Marlowe's the only woman who uses lipstick? All right, Mark. Have it your own way for the present. But, Miss Marlowe, I suggest you hold yourself in readiness to be called as a material witness, if not an accessory before the fact. What about Mr. Fenton? Well, on the strength of your confession, I'll have to hold you for the murder of Stephen Elliott. John, I wonder if you'll do something for me. What is it, Flynn? It won't take very long. It might prove helpful all around. I wish you'd let me take over for a reenactment of this thing. Well, Fletcher, I think we've gotten about all we can from it right now. I'd like to go into a couple of things. All right, would you like to go into the den? Yeah. Oh, no, not in there. Don't worry, Miss Marlowe, the body's been removed. I'd like to have Miss Marlowe's sister present, please. Oh, well, could bring Miss Susan into the den. This belongs to your sister, doesn't it? Yes, it does. When did you last see it? Be sure now. Well, I, I saw it earlier this evening on the vanity table after Paula left for the theater. She forgot it, I guess. So it couldn't have been lost here last night at the party. Oh, Susan's all mixed up. I believe you told Mr. Kimball that you went to sleep shortly after Mr. Fenton called at your apartment. Yes, I did. So your sister could have returned after her performance without waking you and put on her bracelet before taking her midnight drive. Miss Marlowe, have you ever fired a revolver? What are you trying to imply? I believe I'd cooperate if I were you, Miss Marlowe. You have my confession. Isn't that enough? Not nearly enough, Mark. All right. I don't mind answering your questions. I've nothing to hide. Yes, I know how to use a gun. And you knew that Mark Fenton always carried one? Yes, he has a permit. And in a moment of stress, you could have snatched that gun from his pocket. And killed Stephen Elliott? Of course. But the only flaw to that is that it isn't true. Mark, please take the exact position you were in when you shot Elliot. I was uh, standing about here. O'Connor, please come here. Yes, sir. You're the same height as Elliot. Right. Take this and hold it just as you were holding your gun. Well, like this. Did you get me that piece of string? Here it is. This hole is where the bullet entered the wall after passing through the head of the deceased. Is this where Elliot stood, Mark? A little closer. The bullet passed right over the left eye. Hold this. Then this is the only spot from which that bullet could have been fired, which means that the gun must have been held about a foot lower than that flashlight. Well, what are you trying to prove, Fletch? That the weapon might have been held by a shorter man. Or a woman. What do you mean? Are you trying to hang this thing on me? I didn't have a thing to do with killing Stephen. Why, he was already dead when I... He was dead when you what, Miss Marlowe? He was dead when I came to this house tonight. 
Yes, I lied. I was here. But I didn't kill him, I tell you. He was already dead. All right, Paula. We might as well tell him the truth. Another phony confession, then? Not this time. Go on. Tell him how we met here tonight. Well, I... I came to this house tonight to keep my date with Stephen. I found the outside door open, and I thought at the time it was funny. Then I went inside and found Stephen on the floor. Why didn't you call the police? I didn't know what to do. I ran out and saw Mark coming up the walk. I had just driven up. I told him about Stephen, and I said I was afraid they'd think I did it. He told me to go home and leave everything to him. Did you examine the den? If I had, do you think I'd been fool enough to leave a cigarette and bracelet around here? I only gave it a quick look in. Yes, and then you dreamed up your gallant little story. You must have felt very certain of Miss Marlowe's guilt. I know that circumstantial evidence can be very dangerous. I don't think for a moment that Paula killed Elliot. Nevertheless, I'm afraid I'll have to ask Miss Marlowe to come with me. Susan, darling, it's not at all necessary for you to leave. You're acting very dramatic and childish. Paula, I can't live this sort of life. We've talked about it till I'm blue in the face. Now, I'm leaving, so let's say no more about it. Telephone for you, Miss Susan. Thank you, Louise. Hello? That'll be fine. Thank you very much. I'll pick it up right away. Who was that, dear? Just a man about my reservation. Oh. See you later, Paul. I'm going out for a while. Hello, Susan. Oh, come in. Come in, Mr. Johnson. Eddie! Darling, do come in. Sit down, I'll fix your favorite drink. Oh, darling, I'm so glad you could come over. I have such wonderful plans. Eddie, you look wonderful. We'll start with a tremendous advertising campaign. Miracle at Midnight reopens by public demand. I'll get Lawrence Crescent to play the leading man. That other ham... fellow wasn't suitable at all. Also, I want you to contact Madeline Mars agent. I'd like for her to play the maid. Oh, Eddie. Eddie, darling, can't you just see it? We'll reopen... Just a minute. Who plays your part? Oh, why, you silly boy. I do, of course. Why, the publicity from all this... Well, you know what I mean. Uh, my public wants me back. Hold your horses, my pet. Now, I'm going to give it to you straight. Your public, as you call it, doesn't want you any more than it wants a hole in the head. You're washed up, finished. Why, how dare you, you idiot? Why, you have about as much idea of what's good theater as... as this hat. Now get out of here and stay out. Go on, get out. Louise! Louise! Yes, Miss Paula. That oil man who's been so attentive lately. What's his phone number? I'll get it for you. Good evening, Mr. Halliday. Hello, Bill. Just a cup of coffee. Yes, sir. Hiya, Flats. I'm sorry, Mark. I didn't mean to keep you waiting all this time. But I met so many of my old friends who'd read that story John gave out, giving me credit for everything. It certainly put me right back into the swing of things. Yeah, but you swung a little too far, didn't you, Fletch? When I told you to use any means to get me free, I never dreamt you'd get Paulo into this mess. Now, I'll have one heck of a time getting her out. No one can get her out of it. The evidence against her is too conclusive. Yeah, thanks to you. I knew you'd do a great job, but I never thought you'd... Oh, well, I don't want to talk about it now. I'll get her off. Juries don't get women off just because they're pretty. And you're in a mess too, Mark. Remember, it was your gun that fired that bullet. And your story of self-defense didn't stick. So now you're stuck with your story, and I'm not trying to be funny. Look, Fletch, I told you I don't want to talk about it. You heard me. Sir, well, well, but isn't our little friend, Don Elliott, plastered to the gills as usual? That kid's no earthly good to himself or anybody else. I heard you're right about that, Fletch. Look, Mark, I want to help you. Why don't you tell me the truth about all this? Once and for all, Paula did not pull the gun from my pocket. Have you missed the gun at any time? I mean, uh, has it ever left your possession without your knowledge? If you've missed it, naturally, you wouldn't want to tell about it for fear of tying up the case against Miss Marlowe. But, Mark, you must think about yourself. As things are now, it's either you or the girl or both. Not necessarily. It could have been somebody else. 
If my gun had disappeared from my pocket, let us say my overcoat pocket the night of the party. Then you're admitting it. I'm admitting nothing yet. Well, don't worry. I'll respect your confidence, Mark. Now I think I see the whole thing. You went back to Elliot's last night to recover your gun and found Paula Marlowe running from the house, just as you told it. And my gun? Probably you found it in the den. Mark, you must tell the truth about this in court. How do you know I'm not going to? I have my reasons for not wanting to spill everything just now. If you'll excuse me, Fletch, I've got to run along. Come on. Fletch, old boy. Hello, George. Good to see you again. Sit down. Thank you, Mr. Elliot. Hello, Don. Hello, Mark. I've been looking for you everywhere. You flatter me. I want to talk to you. How's about my driving you home? Swell. We'll have a little drink together. What's the good news, fella? Well, I don't think it's good news. Mark, it's ridiculous. How could I have shot Uncle Stephen? I was drunk, yes. But I'd remember some part of it, wouldn't I? Maybe you do, Don. Don't you remember when he slapped your face? Slapped my... Yeah. I think I do remember that. But how did you know? I saw everything from the terrace. I came to ask about my missing gun. I heard you two quarreling. So I stepped to the door and looked in. Are you trying to say you saw me shoot my uncle? Look, Don. I want you to remember everything. Now think. Didn't you go upstairs with a bottle after he slapped your face? Yeah. Didn't you drink it all? Yeah. Didn't you come down with a gun in your hand? I sort of remember coming down again. But the gun... You see? You can remember part of it. And some of it's blank. Just as it was when you ran over that woman with your car. I didn't run over the woman. The witnesses said... I'm afraid those witnesses weren't very reliable. You ran over her and you didn't remember. That's the blunt truth, Don. Why do you have to tell me that now? I just wanted you to realize what could happen to your memory. Look, Ma, I'm scared to ask you this, but... Are you guessing, or did you see me shoot my uncle? Tell me, Mark. What am I going to do? Well, you... You can't just sit around and wait for the electric chair. Electric chair? I'll kill myself first. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't talk like that. Say, you haven't a gun around here, have you? Yes, I've got a gun. Well, you better let me have it. Not on your life. Now, go away. Let me alone. Okay, Don. I'll be in my apartment for a while if you need me. Kimball, this is Don Elliott. I've got to tell you something. I've got to clear everybody. I... I don't know what you're saying, Don. What are you talking about? I killed my uncle. And I'm going to kill myself. I just wanted you to know. Oh, you've been drinking, Don. What makes you think you killed your uncle? Oh, don't give me that. I know you're coming to get me. You're going to give me the chair. Snap out of it, Don. Whatever gave you such a crazy idea? Mark told me. I don't remember, but he saw me do it while I was drunk. Wait a minute. Did Mark Fenton come over there and tell you that story? He saw me. He saw me. Hold it. 
Now, you listen to me. There's not a word of truth in that. I'm pretty sure I know who killed your uncle. And I'm coming right over there. You wait for me. But Mark told me. He, he said... Hello. Hello. Where's down now, Wolcott? He's at home, sir. Oh, there's no use telephoning, sir. Mr. Don would never hear it. He's been drinking rather heavily, and uh, he's indisposed, if you know what I mean. Yes. So I'm taking the evening off. You think it's safe to leave him alone? Oh, yes, indeed. He's asleep on the divan in the den, and I'm sure he'll be very comfortable for quite some time. So if you'll excuse me, sir. Oh, oh yes, yes. Good night, Mr. Fenton. Good night. Framing a little suicide, huh, Mark? Well, we've been doing a little framing ourselves. The cartridge you just fired was a blank. Hold it down. I think I once mentioned that I, too, celebrate with bracelets. Sorry I didn't have time to have these engraved. Take it away, boy. 